one of the main places where people encounter discrimination and marginalization and social exclusion is in employment. Therefore, employers have a key role to play in helping us to build a better and fairer future. Equal Insights builds onto the work that I've been doing in my research on gender mainstreaming and equality and diversity mainstreaming, hoping to help organizations to embed equality and inclusion into their everyday policies and practices, and therefore actually address the root causes of inequality rather than the symptoms. What is really exciting is we got two things that are coming out through Equal Inside. The first one is a platform that any organizations, departments, universities uh, in the country could use to submit their Athena Swan data and analyze it. Uh, so that's going to be an online platform and that's going to be super exciting because it allows for a different kind of analysis to come through. The second one is a community of practice that we're building and the main event for that is our annual Bridging the Gap conference. This brings together practitioners, both from academia, from the private sector, from the public sector. In a way, we're all fellow travelers. They are all interested in affecting some kind of change. There are different approaches to doing this, and that's the beauty of the work, and that's what really comes through when it comes to the conference and the different voices that are included within our conference speakers, the panels, and the keynotes. One of the exciting things uh, and also quite scary things about Equal Insight is that it is our first spin out at the University of Bristol in the social science area. It is exciting because it is actually demonstrating about the impact that our research can have beyond the very specific focus of our research projects. But it is also quite scary because it takes you out of your comfort zone. You're doing things that you weren't necessarily trained to do as an academic. So yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting and scary all at the same time. So what is the pathway to commercialization? Certainly for me, anyway. Uh, it was joining the ARC program and the Aspect Accelerator. So the ARC Accelerator forces you to think about a number of different things, including what is the value proposition of your idea? Can you build it into something that is sustainable? Not just in the short term, but long term. How are you gonna scale it? Those are all big questions. I certainly wasn't ready to answer those when I started the program, but learn how to think about them. And last but not least, what I've also learned is that a good venture, like any company, cannot be run just by one person. You need a team around you. So thinking about what do you bring to the team, what other people bring to the team, and what kind of skills you need to bring into your team so that you have complementarity rather than overlap. Those are all things that you'll have the opportunity to think about and learn through the ARC program. The university's commitment to being a civic university, to equality and social justice, provides incredible opportunities for social science researchers to engage in impact as well as commercialization activities. I would encourage anyone here at the university to really explore the opportunities available to them uh, by talking to their TTOs or by talking to anyone in Dre. I definitely would not have been able to do everything I've done in the last two years without the support from the TTO, from the Department for Innovation, from my head of school. I found the University of Bristol to be a really receptive place to do this work and to access the right kind of support.